Today we'll be installing the latest release of Ubuntu Server, which is 22.04 LTS. This is a great and minimal installation, which offers a command line interface and keeps the resource usage down to a minimum. What we'll first do is download Ubuntu Server. Go to the download section on ubuntu.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Select Ubuntu Server or get Ubuntu Server. If we click on that, we'll have a few options at the bottom. Make sure to select option two, the manual server installation. This will give us a download image for Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS. We'll click the download button and give it a few moments to start the download. Select the location for the download and save that image wherever you want. Now that I'm done downloading the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app. What we're doing today is flashing this image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of your choice. Belena Etcher is a great application to do this. After we're done flashing, we can take this USB over to the computer where we want to install Ubuntu Server onto. And as a bonus, I'll also be showing you how to install a web server so that you can start developing a website right away and host it locally on your own server. All right, so we're going to select the image, the one that we just got done downloading. It says Ubuntu 22.04 live server AMD 64 for a 64 bit processor. I'm going to select open and then I'm going to find a USB CD or DVD that's completely free because with the flashing process, we will be erasing the contents of this USB CD or DVD in order to put our image onto it. So make sure you're selecting the proper one. If you have more than one device, you can select it here in select drive. Once you have your selected, you can hit continue. You can also use other bootable disk creators like UNet Bootin or Rufus if you don't want to use Belena. Anyways, after you're done with that, you can hit the flash button. You'll be asked for administrative privileges here. Select yes and give it a few minutes to finish up the flashing process. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Ubuntu 22.04 LTS on and insert it into that computer. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to be the first to boot. This is usually done by finding the correct key to get into your BIOS and then changing the boot priority around. Now that I'm done flashing the image onto my USB, I'm going to exit out and take this USB over to the computer where I want to install Ubuntu server on. I'll show you how I change my boot priorities around. Yours might be different, of course, but let's go check that out now. And on my computer, when it's first loading up, it's going to ask whether I want to boot in a BIOS. The key for my BIOS is F2 or the delete key. Yours might be something different in order to get in a BIOS. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard or computer. So since mine is a newer UEFI based BIOS, Yours might be different, but I can use the mouse and mine, making it a little more convenient. What we're looking for is to change up the boot priority. Conveniently enough for me, it's available here on the right hand side. So I can look through and try finding the USB that I just got done flashing on, but it doesn't seem to be in one of the top four here. So I can either click the boot menu option F8, but let's go to the advanced mode for me, F7 because this might be what your BIOS more closely resembles. On mine, I have tabs up top, so I can select between the tabs. I have main, AI tweaker, advanced, monitor, and boot. Yours might say boot or boot priority. Make sure to find this in your BIOS and then go down. You want to select your boot option number one, to be the storage disk, either USB, CD, or DVD, that you just got done flashing. So I know mine's a 32 gigabyte USB. So if I look through the list, I should be able to find something that resembles that USB. And here it is right here, my verbatim store and go 1100. It's got about 32 gigs. I know this is the correct one. So I'm going to select storage disk. If you have multiple, avoid selecting the partitions, select the entire disk. So this one's the entire disk. I noticed that by seeing no mention of partitions. Anyways, I'm gonna press enter on this and this should be enough to allow us to boot into our live environment or installer. I'll make one more mention here in BIOS. If you are trying to install Linux, you'll want to make sure that you have your secure boot settings disabled or set to another OS besides Windows or else your system will keep trying to boot into Windows regardless of what you have put into your computer. Also, if you can find fast boot on your computer, you might want to disable that one as well if you're having trouble booting into your Linux environment. All right, and if you did everything correctly, you'll get this screen where you'll get a timeout. If you hit a key, you will end a timeout. 
and you'll be ready to try or install Ubuntu Server. No worries if it went past this, that's because it timed out and selected the first option, which is the one we want to pick anyway. Awesome, if you made it this far, please smash that like button for me and let's start the installation process. First, select the try or install Ubuntu Server and press enter. So first we're asked what language we want to use for the installation process. I'm going to use English, select whatever language you're comfortable with and press enter. Once you've done that, you'll be selecting the keyboard variant that you want to use. Just use the up arrows in order to go through. If you press enter on a selection, you can then again use the up or down keys in order to select whatever language you want. The default here for me is English US, which is great. You can also use the identify keyboard if you want the operating system to try and find the keyboard for you. Once you're finished, you can select the done option and press enter. And here we have another two options. The default is Ubuntu server, which gives you some basic packages so you can operate your server. Otherwise you can go with Ubuntu server minimized. Now be careful because this doesn't really come with anything. It actually says here, customized to have a small runtime footprint where humans are not expected to log in. Well, we're expecting ourselves to log in, so we'll select the first option. It's quite minimal anyway. Be forewarned that at the end of this installation, you are not gonna have a desktop environment. You are just going to have a console, which you can interact with and remote into. That's because the server edition is meant to be as minimal as possible so that your server can get as many resources as possible. All right, once we have Ubuntu server selected, we'll hit done. And again, just press enter once you have that highlighted. Following that, we are now having the operating system detect a network connection. And mine is on ENP 0S3. And you can tell that it has a DHCP address. That means the router gave it a IP address. If you don't have something that's actually giving IP addresses out on your network, you'll have to highlight the adapter, press enter, then you can edit the IPv4 or IPv6 settings manually. If you edit the IPv4, highlight it, press enter, and now you can change the method. Mine's set to DHCP, so it's automatically getting an IP address from the router. You can set it to manual and then type in your subnet address, your static IP that you want for your computer, your gateway, if you have a gateway or router, the name servers, and any search domains that you have. I don't need this since I'm using DHCP. I'm gonna hit cancel. Mine's already assigned, great. You'll want to make sure that you have some form of internet access or else you won't be getting updates and some may be important like security updates. Once you have a connection, you can hit done. Now we're asked to configure a proxy. I don't have a proxy. If you do, follow the standard form that's given. Otherwise, you can just press done. Now Ubuntu tries getting a mirror closest to you. Mine's clearly in the US. Yours might be something different, no big deal. Unless you have a different mirror that you'd like to use that you know about, you can type in the mirror address there. But typically, most people will just go with the default. After that's typed in, press done. And here's where the fun begins. So what we have here is a selection for using the entire disk. Well, since this is a brand new installation and it will be taking advantage of the entire storage disk in this server, I will select this option. I'll also set the setup this disk as an LVM group. LVM is logical volume management and makes it a lot easier for you to manage your storage post installation of the operating system. It allows you to grow the storage and pools a lot easier than using a standard partitioning scheme. If you'd like to encrypt the LVM group, you can by selecting this option, just press space, and then you can put in a paraphrase and confirm that paraphrase. You'll have to enter this password in every time you log into the computer in order to unlock your storage space. I'm not gonna select this. And then I'll mention one last thing. When you use the entire disk, it's going to erase the contents of this entire storage disk. So make sure you have the proper one selected. Press enter on here. If you have more than one, go through, confirm that the storage space, so mine's 160 gigs, actually matches the one which you're expecting to install Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS on. And as long as that's correct, you can move down to the done and press enter. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. We'll start from the top. So what this says here is a few things. It's showing you how it's going to partition the disk. First, we have our root partition, which is currently allocated with 78 gigs. Then we have the boot partition, which is going to be two gigs. And inside that boot partition, there's a gig allocated to the EFI, since this is an EFI-based system. 
Moving on, we have the Ubuntu volume group, which is going to be brand new. This is part of that LVM scheme that I was talking about. It says it's going to allocate 157 gigs overall to that volume group. But what's interesting here is there's free space and it's around 78 gigs. So I actually want to make sure that I change this around a little bit so that it's also using the 78 gigs. It basically splices things in half. So I'm going down to use devices and notice in the Ubuntu LV or logical volume, it's going to be new. It's formatted as ext4 and it's mounted at root for the slash. I'm going to select that 78.47. Yours, of course, might be different. Your storage space might be larger and press enter. I want to make sure to edit this one. That way I'm taking the max size of my storage disk up. Notice how it's max is 156.9. Yours is going to be different. I'm going to erase this over here and actually utilize that entire space. So I typed in 156.945, which is what shows in the max over on the left-hand side. Now I take advantage of the entire disk space. I'm going to hit save and now notice how things have changed here. No longer is there any free space up top. And I can see that my whole volume group is the same as my logical volume and I'm taking up the complete space. If you don't do this, what will happen is you'll only use about half of your storage disk space, which is a little frustrating because later on you'll have to grow that space if you want to use everything else. At the bottom here, it explains everything that's going to happen and it says that it's going to take up a gig for the first partition, about two gigs for the second one, and finally there's 157 gigs for the root partition where all your files and packages will reside for your server. All right, once you're confident that you have the proper disk selected, that you're using all the space, and that you're comfortable overriding the contents of this storage disk, you can select done. And now the operating system is telling you, hey, look, you're about to completely erase the contents of the storage disk. Mine's completely clean. It's a brand new storage disk. No big deal for me. Just make sure again, you had the right one selected. If you're confident, select the continue button. Now we're being asked to set up a user account for the operating system. I'm going to type in savvy Nick for me, and I'm going to call the server savvy server. I'm going to also pick the username savvy Nick and then choose a password for that user. Make sure you remember the username and the password, confirm your password, and you'll be using this to log in later. After you've selected your username and password, press done. And now we're asked whether we want to install OpenSSH server. This is a great idea. Since this is a headless server, meaning there's no GUI and you probably want access remotely, you'll want OpenSSH server because it's the easiest way to get in remotely and start issuing commands. I'm going to select that and then go down to done and press enter. Following that, we have all sorts of packages that we can select from that can help you set up various different servers, databases, front end tools, and all sorts of good stuff. Unless you have something very specific you want to install right away, don't select anything. You can always install these post installation of the server. And that's what I suggest. That way you keep things at a minimum. Remember, I'll be showing you how to set up a web server momentarily. We're almost done with this installation. Press done if you're ready. Okay, so what's happening now is the installation is actually taking place. This will take a few minutes, anywhere between 10 minutes to an hour, depending on your system, how fast your internet connection is, if you're getting updates, just be patient and give it a few moments to finish the installation. And once everything is finished, the security updates have installed, your log should look very much like mine, and you'll get this option that says reboot now. You can press enter at this point and give it a few moments to load stuff. The very last thing you'll see here is please remove the installation media and then press enter. This means remove the CD, USB, or DVD that you're using to install Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS, or else you'll boot back into that install image and it'll try reinstalling again. If you fail to do so, not a big deal. Just shut down your system, remove the USB, CD, or DVD, and then boot it back up in order to get into your actual installed environment. So if you've removed that media at this point, you can press enter. You may or may not see this screen, which is a selection for Ubuntu again. This is just the grub menu and it will automatically time out itself and select the first option, which is Ubuntu. That's exactly what we want. A bunch will scroll across the screen as it's doing its checks and getting ready to log you in. Now, if you see this screen, you've officially installed Ubuntu 22.04 LTS successfully. Congratulations, you're ready to log in with the user you created. 
In order to log in, type in your username. Mine was Savvy Nick, type yours in. Press enter, and then it's asking you for a password. Put your password in that you created, and you should see this same output. This means you're logged in. We have the username, which mine's Savvy Nick, and then it does at Savvy Server, basically your server or computer name. If it's been loading for a while and you're not seeing the user login, just press enter a few times, see if it pops up. Sometimes the console gets messed up and that'll help you check to see if the system's trying to wait for you to log in. And since we're in the console or command line interface, let's go and install that web server really quick so you can understand how to use this a little better. All right, with things cleared out, I'm going to install that web server real quick. First, I'll do sudo apt install Apache 2. This is the web server package and I'll press enter. Give it a few moments to install things. Now this web server will be accessible on your local network. And one thing we need to figure out is the IP address of the current server. So I'm gonna do IP space A. This will give me some information and I see inet 10.0.2.15 for mine. So I'm going to remember that IP address so I can access it from different computers on my network. Now we need to see if a new folder exists since, since we installed the Apache package. I'm gonna do cd base slash var www slash html. And in here, if I do ls, I'll notice there's an index html file. In order to open that file, use your favorite editor. I'm just gonna use nano so I can make it easier on myself. And then space index.html. Notice that there's a whole bunch inside this file. And this is just the default index file that Apache gives you in order to test your server out. So notice that there's a background color of all Fs currently. We can change that around just to see if things change on our page. So first off, let's see and make sure that we can access the page. And with some port forwarding rules, you might actually have to do this in your router as well. I forwarded between two computers on my network since by default access to any of my ports are blocked on the router side. Once I forwarded it, I can access this page by typing in the IP address from before. So that 10.0.2.15 for me, that's all I had to type in. And notice we have this Apache 2 default web page. Congratulations, if, if you see this, you're currently hosting your own web server. Notice it says var www.html index.html. That's the file I was talking about a moment ago. Let's go back there, change something around so we can see that things are in fact changing on the web server. Okay, back to here where we have nano. I'm going to the background color and I'm gonna change this to all zeros. That should change things to a black color. Then I'm going to do control X to save things. It asks me to save the modified buffer here in nano. I'm gonna press yes or Y and then press enter to name it. And it says permission denied. Well, that's because I didn't run it as a administrative user. So I'll exit out real quick, control X and no, I'm not going to save it this time. And instead of running just nano, index HTML, I'm gonna type sudo space nano, and that should give me administrative privileges. And now I can edit that background color and I'll change that to all zeros here. Save and exit again, press yes, enter, and let's check out the web page once more. Now, if I reload things, notice how this border here has changed to a black color. Awesome, we're editing the proper file. And that's the location, this www.html, where you can start making your own web site on. And if you wanna make this public for other people to access, you'll have to change up and port forward port 80 through your router. I don't suggest opening up ports to the public. What I do typically with this Ubuntu server is just use it locally for testing, such as developing web pages and using them on my local network. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation of Ubuntu 22.04 LTS server. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.